Welcome. I'm Kristen, and this is the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast, where I talk about living a creative, intentional life. I like to chat about quilting, knitting, what I'm reading and watching, and even a little bit about keeping a cozy, organized home. You can find me online at my blog, Simple Handmade Every Day, at kristenesser.com, or on Instagram at Kristen Esser. I've got my cup of tea in hand, so let's settle in for a chat. Welcome to episode 22. The Everyone Except Me is Going to QuiltCon episode. Yeah, this is the week of QuiltCon, and I remember it so fondly from a year ago when it was in Pasadena. I felt pretty smug about the fact that while they were alternating West Coast and East Coast shows, they seemed to move the East Coast one around, mostly in the South, actually. But the West Coast one was always in Pasadena, and I thought that was pretty handy for me since I don't live far from Pasadena and um, but this year it's in Nashville and then next year it's in Portland Oregon which I love Portland but I don't know that I can get there for that so it was very handy for me because I could just take a couple days off work and I would just drive back and forth and not have to incur the hotel bill and all that it made it very affordable to go but um, that's not going to be the way it is so we'll see if I have a really good business reason for expensing that trip next year because I love it. Although I should save my money and go to wherever it's going to be on the East Coast next year because all my online friends, who some I have met in real life, um, they all go to the East Coast one. <laughs> and a number of them share a house and I know so I could get in on that action. And it would be so much fun to spend time with these, these women. But um, yeah, they all like live kind of driving distance from where these shows on that. They're all in the South. How did I make, you know, or most of them are in the South. How did I end up with all these online friends in the South? But anyways, I'm not going. They're all, you know, a lot of them are staying together and I'm just, and I'm on a, a little group chat with most of them and like, I'm the only one not going. So I'm feeling very sorry for myself right now, but that's okay. I'm consoling myself with my cup of tea which is oolong simple loose leaf tea i've talked about them before um, they are a really quality tea manufacturer i'll put a link in the show notes you can just buy the tea um, you know like whichever ones you want but you can also get a little tea subscription service which is really cool and so they sent me like um, the, i think it's called the classic tea mix you know so it's got four different teas in it and um, i've just worked my way through it and every time i open up that little package and I put it in my little perfect tea maker. They actually do give you these reusable like muslin tea bags to pour the, the uh, to put the loose leaf tea in. But I have a the, my, my Tivana perfect tea maker, which I love so much. Every time I pour tea in there, I am just kind of impressed with the quality. You can see the full leaves of tea. You know, sometimes even with loose leaf tea, you know, they're kind of really broken up and stuff, but these, you can see, they are dried loose leaf. <laughs> you can see the tea leaves in it. And so it's very nice quality. So I'm enjoying that right now. I hope you are enjoying some sort of a, a, a fun beverage. So thanks to everyone who um, entered the one year podcast anniversary giveaway I held last time um, that I announced on the last podcast and it was so fun for people to tell me what their favorite things are so the giveaway was for some of my favorite things and that winner has been picked and notified so if you haven't heard from me I'm sorry you did not win she knows that you know she the person who won knows and I will put her name on the blog I keep forgetting to do that anyway um, I asked to enter the giveaway. You just had to tell me what are some of your favorite things. And I got to say that Orophil Thread topped the list, man. People love their Orophil. As an Orophil artisan, I get it. They are also, you know, obviously my very favorite thread. And um, it's just kind of fun to see that I am not alone in that. But so many great um, little things. You just go through, read through the comments from people um, giving a shout out to their husbands for being supportive and helpful to snips and, um, you know, reader glasses to help us see. I get that good light, you know, all those sort of uh, wonderful favorite things. So thank you so much. And I got so just so many, um, you know, like congratulations on a year. And so thank you so much. It's been such a fun year. I, um, I wasn't sure I could, you know, how this was whole thing was going to go uh, with the podcast, but I have to say that it is um, just one of my favorite things that I do twice a month. So thanks so much for being a part of that. Okay, so let's get on to the quilting. 
But first, let me again welcome Fat Quarter Shop as a sponsor of the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast. Fat Quarter Shop carries all major brands like Moda, Riley Blake, Wyndham, Robert Kaufman, and Art Gallery with the largest selection of Fat Quarter bundles anywhere. Whatever the fabric, pattern, or notion you're looking for, chances are they're going to have it. And if they don't, then just ask. Their customer service team is the best, and they will even help you match colors over the phone or online. Visit them at fatquartershop.com. And this month, all Bella Solids by Moda are on sale 20% off. Have you used these? I love Moda Bella Solids. They are amazing. They're really great quality and they don't fray. I will put a link in the show notes for you. What's on my cutting table? Well, of course, I have to bring up and I will promise not to talk your ear off about it. But the hand piece quilt along still in full swing we have moved on past the four skill builder blocks and now we're doing the star blocks which encompasses um you know four patches Uh, the the first one we're doing the first star block is uh it's basically an ohio star with half um, square triangles in the corners and we added those half square triangles later on in the design process of this quilt because when i laid out the full quilt that thing just needed a little something extra in the corners so i don't know if that is has a real block name (laughs) or not we are calling the next five blocks which are all stars they're all characters from friendship album 1933 the audio podcast that francis o'rourke dow is um releasing weekly um as a quilty a quilty novel and so this first block is dorothy it's interesting i mean the fact that there were five characters in that novel and five star blocks was completely serendipitous. It was not planned out. But as we were trying to research the names of these stars and coming up empty, we're just like, let's just name them. And so this is Dorothy. The book, Friendship Album, 1933, takes place in Ohio. Again, this was not planned out. But since this was the Ohio star, how perfect is that? So we call it Dorothy because Dorothy is sort of the no-nonsense um, character in that novel. And she's an accomplished quilt maker. And so she's like just there to get us uh, started off on the stars. So that's been really fun. And I am so, I'm so amazed by the fact that we released these tutorials um, at like 1 o'clock in the morning Pacific time. So like four o'clock in the morning, East Coast time. And I know that it's like daytime in Australia, but often when I get up in the morning, people are done with their blocks. (laughs) And if not, when I first get up, then definitely later that day. So people are just on it. And there are people who are making um, more than one of every block. Sometimes some people are just reversing the background and print placements of the fabrics for a secondary block but um, there was a thread on our closed Facebook group today about what are you going to do with this quilt and um, some people are just doing the the mini quilt which is what the the pattern is but a lot of people are doing multiple blocks and and they're just talking about oh this is going to be our my Christmas throw or it's one of us is going to be a memorial quilt so many different things that people are doing someone else is adding these teddy bear blocks in and it's going to be a baby quilt so so many different things but that just again has turned out to be such a fun project so never too late to join the tutorials are up on our blog so just if you want to just go check it out there have been so many unlikely converts to hand piecing where people saying i never thought i was going to like this or and then a lot of people saying this is actually how i learned to quilt but i haven't done it in years thanks for reminding me thanks for reminding me it was something that i enjoyed so anyways that has been fun i actually semi-related to this was contacted by a quilt guild to do a lecture and teach a workshop, which completely gobsmacked me. I've not even really ever considered doing that, but and I decided to do it. I, actually, I, I really mulled it over for quite a long time because I wasn't sure that I even had enough of a trunk show. But the funny part is, is this is not until late in 2020. So I've got like a year and three quarters to to figure it out. But I think I'm going to do a hand piecing workshop. I even talked to someone at the guild about whether they thought that would go over. And this is in a town that has um, kind of an older population because there's a really big retirement community. And she was saying that there is a a group of people that are doing it, but they're they're really aging out, so to speak. So it would be nice to kind of bring in um, some some younger quilters doing hand piecing. So I'm super excited about that. Super excited slash terrified. But um, 
it's going to get me kind of off my duff to do some things um, that I've been meaning to do for a long time. I have a number of quilt patterns that have been in magazines that the rights have reverted back to me. And um, so I just, I need to turn them into patterns for sale. And there's all kinds of things about that, that, um, that I've been just procrastinating on. I mean, I've written the instructions that I submitted to the magazine. They kind of often put it into their own format. So the patterns are actually written, but formatting it and making covers. And I don't know if I need to uh, take additional photos. I don't know. There's a whole lot about publishing my own patterns that I'm a little nervous about, but that is um, my kind of next big goal is to just to get some of my own patterns out there. Speaking of magazine quilts, I'm working on one right now. Um, you know, I hate to do that, but I can't really tell you what it is or who it's for, but I can tell you that I am working with this fabric from Moda called Boro, um, which is the stitching um, that you use in like visible mending. It's a, it's a Japanese kind of stitch. It's like a, it's just a running stitch that you just repeat over and over. And it's like my favorite stitch. As I'm saying this, I'm, I should look at my show notes. Have I talked about this? I may have talked about this, or maybe I just posted on Instagram. I'm not sure. I'm going to tell you again, because I am loving working with this fabric line and I will put a link to it on how it appears on the Moto website. So you can take a look at it, but there, it comes two different ways. There's Boro and Boro Woven. And I didn't 100% understand the difference between them when I designed this quilt and started popping those swatches into EQ8. Um, and uh, so when I asked for them to send, I asked for them to send me a little charm pack so I could um, really see the fabric so I could make my final fabric selections. I just got the Boro Quilting Cottons, which I love. That's like this dark, kind of a dark medium and lighter blues like denims or I want to call them indigos but I'm not sure that's 100% right but they just have these patterns that look like the stitching it's very rustic looking I love 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 it and then there's the woven line and that is what I'm using for the background which is um almost I, I need to find out if I this is true <laughs> I need to ask somebody it's like a linen it's quite heavy it's a coarse weave um, but it's kind of an off-white, comes in different colors. But So that's the background. And then there's uh, other wovens that are kind of grayish blue, I'm like so like a slate, very much my color. And I'm loving those, and I'm loving the prints. I feel like if I was a garment sewer, I would want to go make like a blouse or a dress with them. Um, so between the heavier woven and the kind of lighter woven and the quilting cottons, this quilt has such great texture and I'm just super super excited about using it and I think it's coming out very soon if it's not didn't actually come out in February so I'll put a link to it but if you're kind of into that um, a kind of tonal fabric because it's pretty much all in just this gray to grayish blue to a very dark almost kind of blackish blue and sort of a few colors in between um, I just I love limited color palette quilts and I'm often not brave enough to make them because I'm just like I'm doing this whole thing and why would I just use two colors or even just two prints this is my problem with solids I love quilts made with solids but I am often not brave enough to use them except now that is inadvertently um, a perfect segue to the other quilt that I'm um, moving ahead on that I have been talking about forever, which is the Rooftop Wonders quilt, which is now available for purchase on, on Amy's Creative Side website. When I decided I wanted to make that quilt, you had to go buy an uh, an issue of Curated Quilts Magazine, which was $18, which I was kind of happy to do um, because I do think that's a fabulous magazine. I wanted to support it, but now you can buy that pattern for like $9. So um, so this is a quilt that looks improv, but it's not. It's actually one block that is just um, set different directions and you can you just, you know, make that block, um, which has a lot of little pieces in it, but, you know, with different colors. And um, this is for my son, Ben for his like a new a bed quilt and paintbrush studios is give, gave me the fabric for it and I just got it and I need to do sort of an unboxing so first of all they sent me a color card and they have every single color under the sun so it was a little bit hard to decide so Ben and I kind of sat there I, I did like a first pass because there's a lot um I'm using several different colors of neutrals 
tans and browns and grays and then you got all your little pops of color and I didn't want to go there in the pattern they're called brights but you know I, I wanted to go with a little bit muddier colors to make it a little bit more masculine so there's a few different colors of kind of um reds and and mustard yellows and you know and more like rusty reds and um you know I want to call every color a little dirty blues and greens and um I don't know oranges so all kinds of and they're just little pops of color in it so I kind of made some choices and then I had Ben come in and he kind of weighed in and we went back and forth for like three days <laughs> trying to choose the colors but ultimately I think there are oh my gosh there's 25 colors in this quilt or something it's crazy and yet it will look like very neutral that's kind of the funny part so anyways I got my hands on this um these this fabric when I was so excited when they showed up. Now I have, um, I think it was last year at QuiltCon is where I became acquainted with Paint Bar Studios. Jackie Gearing, the queen of solid modern quilts is affiliated with them there. It's um, a US based company. They're in Kansas City, I believe. And they feel amazing. Um, my friend Holly Ann has made a quilt with them. And she said that it's like if Kona Fabric and Art Gallery had a baby. <laughs> and I think it is a wonderful way to describe it. Um, Kona is a little bit coarser, but they do have all the colors. Um, it, or Moda. Moda is another. I love, I have no problem with Moda solids, Moda Bella solids. And then if you've ever used Art Gallery, Art Gallery is more like a lawn. It's, um, or if you've used Liberty, it's definitely thinner and um, softer and slicker. So this, these Paintbrush Studio solids are like a mix they're not quite as slippery which i think is actually kind of a good thing um and yeah it's 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 like if the two had a baby and i am in love again i'll put a link in the show notes um to wherever either to their site or to if that quarter shop carries them i'm not even 100 percent sure but i'll put a link in the show notes so you don't have to chase it down let's move on to what i'm reading or the books part of the podcast this is a little bit of a cheat because these are not books that I'm reading right now, but since I last podcasted, Rosamund Pilcher died. I don't know whether to say Rosamund or Rosamunda. I've always said Rosamunda. It ends with an E, but I love her however she pronounces her name. She's one of my favorite authors. I've talked about her many times, but I just felt like I had to do a little bit of a tribute to her. She was 94 years old, so she had quite a run. But let me tell you a little bit about her if this is um, like maybe the first time you've heard of her. So years ago, many years ago, uh, like maybe 18 years ago or something, I was very into Maeve Binchy, who also has died. So my two favorite authors have now died. Thank goodness for Louise Penny. God be with her. I hope she's okay for a long time. I loved Maeve Binchy. And when Amazon was new... <laughs> believe it or not, there, there was that time. I remember um, that feature when I was like looking at, a, you know, ordering a Mae Binchy book, there was the people who like this also like these. And the book Coming Home came up by Rosamund Pilcher. And um, I put it on a wish list for Christmas. And for whatever reason, it just did not, I did not get it for years. And then one year I finally got it. I like moved it up to the highest priority and I got it. And when I actually got it in my hands I was really disappointed and it was like a small well it's a very thick but it, you know the old-fashioned paperbacks you know how paperbacks are kind of bigger now this was more of the old-fashioned one it was very thick and it had this cover that was like roses and lace and I was like oh my gosh this looks so romancy this it was not even interesting to me so I set it down and I didn't read it for a few more years so from the first time that I heard about this book till I read it, it was probably five years which is just crazy but then I read it, and it's one of those epic stories, and I love these. Um, so it starts in England, of course, before World War II. Here I'm thinking, is, is it World War II or is it World War I? I think it's World War II. It's been, I haven't read it for a long time. With a, a girl who is, um, you know, like maybe 13. And we're going to follow this girl. Her name is Judith through a lot of her life. And it's one of those books, like the, if you've ever read the Cazalette Chronicles, which I've talked about before, that it shows what things were like before the war. 
during the war and after the war. So you really get to see the difference in people's lives. And I think that's one of the things that makes all these World War II and even one um, story so compelling is because people's lives really changed. Even if you watched Downton Abbey and you saw what life was before and during and after, things were very different. We follow Judith as a child who's at school and her parents are in India because, you know, her dad has a job in India and how she goes away to school and the friends that she makes and then how everything is affected during the war and then, you know, when she's out of school. So you get to her whole life. And I've brought this up before with Rosamund Pilcher is that houses are as much a character as people. And you have to read a book to really understand that. But there is a house called Nanchero. There's a dower house. There's just, there's a row house. There's all kinds of houses that just figure in to the story so prominently. And I, I just, I love that. So that became one of my all-time favorite books. So of course, I found out that this woman has written lots of books. So let me go check that out. The next book I read of hers was called The Shell Seekers. And this turns out to be the book that made her famous. It was the first one to hit the bestseller list. And um, I have read it twice and I do love it. It's also another epic story about a woman. And um, The Shell Seekers re references a painting. Her father was a painter. And a lot of her stories take place in Cornwall too, which, is, which makes me really want to go visit that place. So also epic all through her life up to when she's, it, I, I believe the book starts when she's an old woman and it's told sort of in retrospect. Um, it's interesting as much as I do love that story I have a few negative associations with it because I read it when I was being um, treated for cancer and whenever I think about it I think about places that I was reading that book um, like waiting for lab results at the hospital stuff so I have I personally have a little bit of a negative association but I've recommended it to others and they have loved it and then her follow-up to that was called September um, there's a character that had cancer in that book when I read that. So I also have a little bit of a negative association, but really good. And it turns out her last book that she wrote in 2000 was Winter Solstice. And I know I've talked about Winter Solstice more than once on this podcast. Um, again, it's a it's a book that I read every Christmas time because it, it takes place right around there. And it also, I mean, all of these books have, have very significant houses to the point that I bought a book called The World of Rosamunda Pilcher, where she shows these places that she talks about. And the book, not the book, the house that is um, in Winter Solstice is a house that she really lived in. And there are photographs of it and the kitchens and the interiors and all the things that, that she describes so beautifully, you can actually see pictures of. And so I actually love to pull that, that book out every once in a while. So rest in peace, Rosamunda Pilcher, you are my absolute one of my absolute favorite authors and it just makes me want to go back and reread all of those which you know what I just I just might do so check her out if you never have I've been watching quite a bit of TV because I've been doing quite a bit of sewing and I've worked out this situation in my sewing room which is really just our living room and dining room I sew at the dining room table and my desk is in the living room that I work at and I have a a secondary like 27 inch monitor and I've learned that if I can I just need to tilt it uh, towards the, the the living room area or the the dining room area and just watch Netflix and I've got um, wireless earphones and I can just look across the room because I mostly just listen when I'm um, sewing anyways but yeah I can just I can have a TV show going in there all the time which is actually really nice um, so I can really just kind of blow through things although you know, like I'm saving things that I really want to pay attention to, to, uh, to watch when I'm hand sewing, because my attention, my full attention is definitely not on these shows. But I did blow through season seven of Call the Midwife. Now I had a, a listener tell me that that season gets a little bit dark. And um, she was not wrong. It, um, there was definitely some, some sad episodes there. I think there's definitely going to be a season eight, so I don't think that's over. But when we get to the end of the season, things get a little sad. And so I actually sat there one morning. <laughs> I stopped sewing and I sat down and cried. And then later on that day, 
I watched Victoria, so I'm just kind of plugging along with Victoria. They're not releasing on PBS the whole season the way they sometimes do when you're a, a passport holder. Um, and something kind of significant happened there, and I had to sit down and cry. In the same day, it was a very rough sewing slash TV emotional day. That was last weekend. So I'm still loving Victoria. I'm still loving Call the Midwife. And then I was just kind of um, looking for something else to watch, and I am re-watching a show called Home Fires. It is on Amazon Prime, if you have that. It very much falls in the same type of thing that like these Rosamund and Pilcher books would fall into. So it is about a little village in England, of course, where the war is just breaking out. World War II is just breaking out. And it's really about this group of women who formed the WI, the Women's Institute, which were very big in England. And they are the women that they band together and they um, really take care of what is happening at home. They raise money. They um, help people make sure that they, that they have enough food, that the that they are organizing drives, letter writing drives and clothing drives and things to, to get to the, the soldiers, that they are growing enough food at home so that um, there's less food that needs to be imported so that, that there's less ships to be shot down out of the ocean and so that there's more food that can go away to the soldiers if they're taking care of their own food needs at home. You know, all the kinds of things that women band together to do in times of struggle. So it's a, a very diverse group of women that are, you know, some of them are rich, some of them are servants, some of them are farmers. And so everyone has their, their own storyline. And they kind of tackle a lot of issues, kind of like Call the Midwife. There are issues of domestic abuse, you know, even, you know, the, the, the little abuse of power uh, among women. There's conscientious objectors. The issue of how they would bring soldiers in to live in your home and like you have no choice <laughs> but to provide a home to a soldier and, and what that was like, that people are being asked to do things like melt down the, their iron gates to be used in the war, you know, just all those kind of crazy things. So it's a great, great show. I think it's just two seasons. I just started the second season. You know, they're not long seasons, but, and you'll, if you watch it, you will see the familiar faces of people from Downton Abbey, the, uh, the sister of Lord Grantham, Rosalind, maybe I can't remember her name. Um, she's in it as is that maid, one of the maids from, from Downton Abbey. If you haven't watched it, I don't want to give away her storyline, but anyways, um, obviously the, all the familiar faces. So, um, you might want to check out Home Fires. As for what is happening at home, my own home fires, a couple things I just wanted to talk about. My kids, my college kids were home. It was President's Day weekend, and it was so good to see them. Um, the only downside, and is it really a downside? Everybody was sick, so we didn't really get to go on a hike or do anything kind of special. What we really did is have what used to be a very normal weekend at home with homework and sewing and Chloe and I watching Gilmore Girls and making each other cups of tea and Jonah getting a chance to play video games, which he doesn't get to do at school and Ben studying, studying, studying. So it's just, it was kind of just nice to have all five people under the roof again. I forget how busy the house seems when this is even in a very laid back weekend and, and how I mentioned this after winter break, how that darn dishwasher fills up like every 10 minutes. It is crazy. But we took advantage of a couple of things. So when they were home for um, winter break is when I got into the whole watching Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. And Chloe watched an episode with me and made the comment, you know, just like, oh my gosh, this just makes me want to clean up every area of my life. So she um, is the uh, arts and entertainment editor for her school paper. So she um, watches movies and shows and plays and writes reviews on them. And so she apparently wrote a review. I actually haven't read it um, on tidying up, which made her say, when I get home, I want to go through my bookshelf. So when they came home, Chloe went through her book. She is such a bookworm. And we've gone through these books many times before. But you know how uh, every time you go through something, it gets a little bit easier to let new things go. So one afternoon, I just walked in and like, and she has big bookshelves and like everything is on the floor and all these different piles. And she'd actually come down stairs and said, 
can you come up? I'm having a little trouble with the spark joy thing. (laughs) And so we were just kind of able to just kind of talk through some of those things that were hard decisions. And she kept some things, frankly, that the next time she goes through, maybe she'll be willing to get through, um, get rid of those. But, you know, I'm just like, I don't want you to feel sad about any of this. The the point of of it is for you to feel relieved at the end of it. And then I had the boys do the same thing. We have this drawer in our entertainment center. Yes, we still have an entertainment center that was full of video games for, I think, games consoles that we don't even own anymore. So they all did the same thing, went through, made decisions about cords and controllers and video games. And and that drawer is so empty now and so light. And we're able to actually put other things in it, like controllers and stuff that we're in non-optimal places so that just it felt it felt so good and it was just kind of fun to see my kids go through the the decision making process and and those things that are gonna I think serve them well as they are going to college and then you know let's face it moving into apartments and moving out on their own and I I was at you know asking questions like are are these things that you would want to move that you would want to put in a box and take and move to place to place because this is you're at that point in your life where you need to start making those decisions so that was um that was kind of fun But before any of that even happened, I went through a few days. I had sort of an unexpected free few days where I was doing that power hour thing um, where I was just knocking off all those um, little items that are non-urgent but important that I just wasn't getting to. And one of those things, and I would actually just put all of this under the category of sort of streamlining your life or my life in this case, was canceling our landline. (laughs) We still have a landline and I... We've had this, we've been in this house for almost 23 years, and it was kind of a hard phone number to give up. You know, it was kind of like part of my identity and the kids' identity. Even they were a little sad. And I've, but I've been thinking about this for about two years because um, finally, when our youngest got a cell phone, like we couldn't give up the landline, in my opinion, until everyone had a cell phone. I've just been giving out my cell phone number as the number that's in all the different places. That's my, what my husband said. We don't even know all the places that, this phone number is that people could not get a hold of us, you know, if, if they called that number. So I've been trying to, for years now, kind of correct that. But for the longest time now, that phone would ring and I never wanted to answer it. It just, it was just purely for solicitations or it just, at some point I'm like, why, why am I, it's just an annoyance. I called to cancel that for about the same amount of money, we could improve the internet. And I thought, well, this is an amazing trade because I hate the landline, but we would love faster internet. So that's what um, we did, which actually, of course, that is never, that's like painting the living room where you then have to paint the hall and the bathroom and the kitchen. It kind of one thing led to another because faster internet meant our modem wasn't fast enough. So they came out and replaced that for free. But now our router is not fast enough, which created a whole other thing. But now we have a new router. (laughs) we actually got this thing called the orby um put out i guess by netgear and it it solved it's not only a router but it's like a wi-fi extender so now um it solved all the problems that we have that i didn't ever have good enough um internet in uh the place in in the living room where i work and we'd had terrible wi-fi upstairs but now all of that is solved and it feels so good I have to say that you guys really came through with the reviews since the last episode. Thank you so much. Let me tell you who left reviews. EED1234, Cynthia P007, Zoe So, and Blessings and Blossoms. Thank you so much for leaving a review. um, And thank you for everyone who's taken the time to do that and a rating again for the gazillionth time. It really helps people find the podcast and I really appreciate it. So you can leave a review on the Apple Podcast app. I reached out to a friend who is on Android, and I'm like, how do you listen to episodes of podcasts on Android? So apparently Podbean is a a podcast catcher. That's where I host the podcast. So you can leave a review there if you're Android. And um, if you know where else, how you can leave a review um, on Android, let me know. Also, a listener reached out to me who's in Finland who left a beautiful review. Um, Oh, now I need to look up her name. It's Linnea. So there's, 
iTunes in different countries, and I'm not seeing those reviews. So I need to hunt that down a bit more. She actually copied and pasted her review and sent it to me via DM. And thank you so much. It was a beautiful, glowing review. So thank you so much for doing that. And so I need to figure out how to check the different countries iTunes. So if you're leaving a review, but I've never mentioned you, I apologize. Perhaps it's just my mistake, but also I might not be seeing it if it's um, iTunes in a different country. So thank you. That's about it for this episode. If you are going to QuiltCon, have a wonderful time. Think of me, post pictures. I will follow everything online. And I hope you enjoyed your cup of tea or lovely beverage while you were listening. And have a wonderful week.